as a mom, as a dad, you should know about your child's sleeping patterns as well as his or her snoring patterns. It is important that you talk to your doctor if your child is snoring. This is because your child may need a sleep study uh, in order to detect a sleep disorder such as obstructive sleep apnea. In this video, we will talk about obstructive sleep apnea, how is it detected, when should you worry and bring your child to the doctor, and how is it treated. Hey, I'm Dr. Christine Albaquiat. I'm a board-certified pediatrician, and my mission is to help moms and dads deal with child health problems to raise happy and healthy kids. <coughs> Pediatric Obstructive Sleep Apnea well, what is it? Pediatric obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep disorder in which the child's breathing is partially or completely blocked several times during sleep. This is due to the narrowing of the upper airways during sleep. There are differences between adult obstructive sleep apnea and pediatric obstructive sleep apnea. In adults, the symptoms are more commonly uh, daytime sleepiness and the most common reason for it is due to obesity while in pediatric sleep apnea children tend to have behavioral problems and the most common reason for it is due to the enlargement of the adenoids and tonsils diagnosis and treatment in children is important to prevent complications that would affect their growth development and behavior how is sleep apnea suspected? Well, sleep apnea affects 2% of children and most of these children are not diagnosed. It can lead to problems in the heart, behavioral problems, learning issues, and growth problems as well. Common symptoms in kids include frequent snoring, uh, trouble breathing at night, sleepiness during the day, difficulty paying attention, and behavioral problems. Now, when should you worry and bring your child to the doctor? Well, if you note any of the symptoms mentioned, then you need to bring it up to your doctor. Your doctor may then request for an overnight sleep study known as the polysomnogram. This study is done in the hospital and other major medical centers. The study involves the medical staff watching your child sleep there would be sensors attached to your child that would detect for breathing, oxygenation, and checking your child's brain waves as well. The results of this study would determine if your child has sleep apnea. Now, how is sleep apnea treated? But before we go to that, are you expecting a baby? How much better life can be when things are under your control upon baby's arrival? where you immediately feel confident about breastfeeding your baby, when you can understand your baby's sleep schedule and better take care of yourself as well, when you know when to worry and call the doctor, when you know how to soothe a crying fuzzy baby. How much better life can be when you can get the training in the comfort of your own home? Well, I've developed an online training video series known as the 5 Newborn Care Strategies. Do check that out in the description section. The most common reason for a child's sleep apnea is due to the large tonsils and adenoids. So the most common treatment for, for it is to remove the tonsils and adenoids. The surgery is known as tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. And this procedure is highly effective in treating a child's sleep apnea. Another effective treatment for sleep apnea is with the nasal CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure. This involves a child wearing a mask while sleeping. What happens is that with the CPAP, a steady air pressure is uh, given through the child's nose, which allows the child to breathe comfortably. The CPAP is the option given for children who do not improve after tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy or if a child is not a candidate for surgery. 
So sleep apnea is not only seen in children with large tonsils and adenoids. There are other medical conditions that puts a child at increased risk for sleep apnea. And these medical conditions include uh, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, and children with craniofacial abnormalities. These children may need additional treatment. Also, children who are overweight or obese uh, may also suffer from obstructive sleep apnea. And most of these uh, get treated by losing weight. But until the weight is lost, the child may need to use a CPAP. Remember, a good night's sleep is important for your child's good health. If you suspect that your child is suffering from obstructive sleep apnea, then you should talk to your doctor about it. With proper diagnosis and treatment, your child can get better care and can have restful sleep. Hey, if you like this video, watch my next video where I teach you about other child health problems.